The world's oceans are the biggest environment on Earth, and most of it remains largely empty, at least seemingly, with land in many places being up to thousands of kilometers away. Therefore, the animals that frequent these regions are very specialized to its conditions, and this includes sharks. Among them are the oceanic white tips, requiem sharks, related to animals like the bull, black tip, and lemon sharks, which are among the most pelagic, aka open water sharks that there are. Mainly inhabiting tropical and temperate seas, mainly above 20 degrees, but sometimes being found in waters as cool as 15 degrees, they are generally common and widely distributed, though this has changed in recent years, as we'll get into. Regarding their appearance, the most distinguishing traits are their long and wing-like dorsal and pectoral fins, which are both notably a good amount larger and rounder than many other sharks, allowing for increased gliding ability through the water. This helps a lot given their open environment and also helps them to save energy. They are also fairly robust and large bodies, usually being about 3 meters in length and weighing around 170 kilograms. They are some of the few sharks that must keep swimming to breathe, a group known as the obligate ram ventilators, having to move to get water to flow past their gills to respire, something found in just about 5% of sharks, give or take. Mainly solitary, they will sometimes gather together when food is readily available, mainly taking cephalopods like squids, following other animals like pilot whales to better find them, given how common they are comparatively. They will also take larger animals like stingrays, turtles, various seabirds, as well as young or vulnerable seals and or cetaceans. Scars on their sides, matching those of the size and shape of giant squid, have also been found on some individuals, so it indicates that some are diving deep enough to battle with them. Their expansive habitats often mean so that coming across said food is usually less commonplace than coastal sharks, and are therefore quite opportunistic and aggressive, being described by some as among the most dangerous of all sharks for this reason. They often approach divers with high attitudes and boldness, being very curious and inquisitive, and are likely responsible for a good amount of notable shark attacks. Most notably, after the sinking of the USS Indianapolis in World War II, many of the sailors who didn't survive either died from exposure to the elements or to shark bites, with White Tips believed to have been responsible for most, if not all of the attacks given the region where it happened. Of the roughly 900 in number crew, only 317 ended up surviving in the end, with up to 30 to around 150 being down to the sharks. Other such instances during the time, like that with the RMS Nova Scotia, is also notable, though it's of course worth mentioning that these are freak events, where large groups of sharks congregated to feed when potential food was widely available, and is not a behaviour that would manifest around single or groups of divers unless the latter were to appear next to a group on purpose. If any of you yourselves end up swimming with these sharks, noting aggression is especially important, and the main way to note when they're acting more bold and aggressive is to note their speed and posture. The speed is more erratic and overall faster, with them often swimming in towards divers before then backing off, doing figure eight like motions while also having their pectoral fins down at a 45 degree angle. Oceanic white tips are however not doing too well, with them now being considered to be critically endangered, even with their wide range. Their populations have in some places crashed by up to 99% over the course of 50 years, mainly down either for harvesting for their own fins or meas, or unintentionally through bycatch. They are protected in some areas like in New Zealand, though going from what were once considered one of the not only most numerous sharks in the oceans, but large animals in general should be a massive wake-up call that our oceans are facing extreme pressures and threats, which are certainly fixable, but only with the necessary political will and policies in place to do so. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you for the next instalments of this year's Shark Week.